Okay, so um, this is supposedly um, a talk about how uh, the VASP get optimi optimized and run well on KNL. But I think most of the optimizations are done by the developers. So recently uh, we have a paper actually summarized all the, all the work relevant. There is another one as well. But I think uh, why don't I just say as a nurse, participation, what we have achieved. I think that would be a, another case study as well. So what I want to show, uh, present in this, uh, in this report is, uh, case study is, um, actually the code optimization actually was done by the developers. Actually their effort started like a long time ago, like probably several years ago. So the major effort is they add the OpenMP directives to the uh, pure MPI code. So the, the code actually, the, the currently official release of the code is still in MPI only. Uh, but uh, this hybrid code actually is under the beta testing and I think very soon, it, yeah, so sure it's business decision they will made, but they, they will have to make but I think the code will be ready for you know general official release really soon. So um, <coughs> so the the VASP code is a material science code, and uh, actually it's used a lot of machine time at NERSC. So if we look at uh, about seven hundred applications at NERSC, it uses um, it's a uh, number one there. It's uh, the blue blue pie over there. So it is very critical to get this code run well on KNL. So fortunately, the important work has been done, optimization work has been done. And actually, NERSC participated some, something like uh, uh, exploring the, the MCD RAM's performance impact into the code. We, we helped the developers through the dungeon session with Intel, and that's happened like 2015, I think. And then another one I think we helped is uh, just help them to do this beta testing and also the explore those execution space parameters so to get the code perform better. So this is the the current performance it achieved. So the blue bar is the uh, the pure MPI code, and the the red bars are the the hybrid MPI open MP uh, code. It's a, it's optimized code. So what we can see now, um, if we look at the second bar group, so the one got the star. That's the the best performance we get now, and compared to the you know, pure MPI code, it's about two to three times the speed up. So this is a big performance gain over here. Um, but uh, that was uh, not possible if we just depend on what we handed over from Intel. Actually, we, when we started to look at the performance on Cori, actually we see about uh, I think about 30% to 200% slower uh, numbers compared to the, what Intel provided us. But we did some uh, performance tests and I think over the, that time period also we had a um, system improve, I guess. So in any way, after this execution space um, exploration, I think we brought up the, uh, the performance on Cori KNL. So the, <clears throat> so I so I was debating like between talking about the optimization and then the performance. Anyway, I don't have time, so um, I would say I just want to uh, present uh, roughly at a high level. I think the code optimization is uh, just adding the MPI. Uh, I mean the Open MP directive to the the MPI, uh, pure MPI code. And then the major challenge here is how you, um, how they, uh, you know, leverage the three levels of different parallelism in, inside the code. So basically the MPI is a top level, 
And then the second level is uh, the threading, multi-threading, uh, using OpenMP. And then the next level would be CMD vectorization. So that's the major challenge they have, they have addressed. And then we have a, we can, we, I don't, today I want, I want to skip this part, uh, but basically they add a lot of effort to simulate the, um, <laughs> the, the code. So the code is really um, well, you know, vectorized. So the one I want, um, I want to present is the, what we help, you know, as a NERSC effort. So basically we collected the, uh, actually six different test cases. So we use these test cases to, uh, to test the performance. So our intention is to cover the, the typical workload at NERSC. And also, um, we also, uh, so the benchmark case, we try to include all the different uh, considerations, combine those considerations together. So one is uh, we use, uh, uh, like, uh, selected the test cases that can exercise different code passes. And then also we, we try to get different elements in the system, different, um, and then also consider the different problem sizes. So. That's, uh, we used these test cases and did um, the, a lot of performance tests, just exploring the execution space parameters. Uh, the, the reason we do this is actually KNL provides a, a lot more flexible ex execution and then boot time and, and all these options are really flexible. So we try to explore all the possible uh, combinations of the you know, the, the execution space parameters. So at the, <coughs> the thing we explored, sure, it's a new code. Uh, we are familiar with the, the pure uh, MPI only code, but uh, not yet this um, uh, hybrid code. So we did first the thread scaling. And uh, those workloads actually are from the production uh, the workload, so it's not yet um, addressing the like hero you know big runs but it's uh, just uh, the medium run we can see it's up to 16 nodes we tested so this is one of the test case um, which is a really typical uh, DFT calculation uh, case and then we see the thread scaling and and compare with the, the Haswell result so basically what we see is um, uh, the 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 code, the hybrid code, scales up to uh, four to eight threads in most of the, the runs, different node runs. And then also we compare with the Haswell result and we can see um, around like four nodes, they have a similar performance. Uh, but this one, after that, then we see Haswell is better. But uh, in another code pass, this is a relatively more memory intensive workload. This is uh, something called uh, um, hybrid functional calculation. And we see that uh, when the node count increases, um, eventually the Haswell catch up, but we can see the performance difference is much larger here. But still we see a good thread scaling up to eight. Actually, I didn't include in the presentation. Actually, we, in the paper, we also looked into um, the same system we looked into what if the uh, what the scaling look like if we use 32 threads per task and go even further like 32 uh, 16 two, two nodes and it was still uh, scaling so it is uh, uh, I think um, actually for the for adding open MP actually our goal is basically, I mean, for many of the code, the goal is to match the pure MPI performance. Uh, it's, just, it's not easy, easy to see. Let's say on a Haswell, something like this multi-core system, actually it's hard to expect the hybrid code can beat the you know, pure MPI code. But in this case, this code, I, I think it's a pretty good. With the open MP, there is a, a good speed up.
decent amount of speed up over there. So uh, those are similar. Uh, okay, I, I maybe I just mentioned this thing. Um, this spike is a really um, interesting one. We we don't uh, we we are not sure what's happened there, but uh, this is the case. These spikes happened only when the the code you we use just one thread per uh, per task, and also we see for the sixteen previous one actually we had another spikes. This one had a, it happens on the sixteen threads there. And then recently we did, we looked into why it looks the we got that kind of numbers and basically it looks like it's some sort of uh, interaction between um, the huge pages we used, but anyway, uh, only these two edge cases we we see some uh, you know performance um, you know negative performance from the, the using high uh, huge pages. But when we do this test, actually our recommendation is using huge pages all the time. And I think this is partially is the some interaction with the system, I guess, configuration, and still we need to further investigate. But anyway, we first investigated the thread parallel scaling. I will skip all those. And then we also looked at the, the memory mode. So basically, NERSC's recommendation actually uh, was like either using the flat mo quad flat mode or quad cache mode. So our test started from there, and then the test shows uh, they are very similar. This is what we get with with VASP with some like spikes, and those spikes unfortunately they are reproducible and it's not like a random thing. And we we indeed need to investigate. So basically, our conclusion is all these uh, test cases actually they f they fit in the MCD MCD RAM uh, well, so it's not like a big case. So we see that as long as it, the the case can fit into the MCD RAM memory, we didn't see the performance difference between flat and the uh, and the cache mode. So our recommendation would be just to use the uh, cache mode. So we also looked into hyper-threading, and basically our conclusion, I just want to skip this, but basically um, this is a very typical hyper-threading effect for the DFT code. So when you use like a small node count, then the hyper-threading helps a little bit, but in major portion actually in the scaling region, parallel scaling region, actually hyper-threading doesn't help. Actually, it slows down code uh, significantly. So we uh, recommend the users to use, um, just not to use hyper-threading. <coughs> and huge pages, uh, this one we also looked into. And, and basically, in all, no, all the cases, actually, we, we observed by you know, our test is the performance is better with, uh, with uh, uh, huge pages or the similar or, or better. We didn't see the slowdown. But uh, the one I just mentioned at the beginning, I guess that's uh, some sort of interaction with the system issue, so we, we need to investigate. But uh, anyway, that's our uh, huge page test. And then also it's very important one is um, uh, we looked at the compilers and the libraries. So actually, the like other DFT codes, um, VASP also uses actually heavily depend on the library the performance, uh, especially the MKL, uh, no, especially the linear algebra and then FFT. It's the major. It's it it counts for like a major portion of the execution time. Actually, it is very important to look into this part. So we did. Uh, Compile the code with different compilers and did some uh, use the different combination of library and compilers and, and we notice the the best one is still Intel plus plus MKL's linear uh, algebra and FFT FFT routine from MKL uh, that one is through FFTW interface uh, provided by MKL so basically we can see. The best one is, is somewhere here, the, the blue bar. 
the uh, green bar over here. So that's basically is a uh, is here gray. Where is it? Oh, blue bar. Sorry, blue bar over here. So it's Intel. The best one is Intel plus MKL, and then scale pack we, we use the Alpha uh, library, and that one is the best one. So this is a similar one. So we did come up with some best practice tips for our users. So we are pretty confident by the time like uh, uh, July when, when, we, when Cori enters production. I uh, know starting charging, it's already entered production. So when we start to charge the, the time on Cori KNL, actually this code uh, could be you know, running efficiently. So we came up with some good practices for users. So basically, uh, the, how many threads to use, uh, this is one important recommendation for them. So eight threads or four threads is a good one to use in all situations. And then the, some of our users also compile code by themselves, although we provide our pre-compiled binaries for various reasons they would like to have their own. So we, we recommend Intel compiler MKL. And the, if they want to, they can add Alpha, but uh, that's not a major thing. But anyway, Intel compiler plus MKL is our uh, thing. And then Huzi Pages helps, so they should use and then the, the cache mode is good to go. And then uh, in, in our case, so we have uh, 68 physical cores on a node, but to, in VASP, we recommend to use 64 cores. This is not just because of easy to divide the thread and, and the task. Actually, we, this is uh, actually the FFT performs better with, uh, you know, to, to the power of you know, the, the cores here. So that's all, all I have for this case study. Thank you.